The following is a paid program by Zola Levitt Ministries. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Left presents Shalom and welcome to our program. We are here in Israel and we want to take a look back at 2014. It's such a joy to be with you here in the Holy Land. You know, it's been the heart of Zola Levitt Presents from the beginning to bring you a glimpse of what's happening here in the land. And this series that we're going to show you is called The Journey of Restoration. Yeah, and Israel is a picture of restoration. Really, it's, it's a picture of God's prophetic time clock and points to the return of the Lord. We thought some people can't come to Israel. Right. Let's bring Israel to them. Absolutely. And so here we go. Let's take a look at the journey of restoration. I love Israel. I love the people. Totally so. It's indescribable. It feels like home. It just feels like home. Welcome to Jerusalem. It was, just took my breath away. Yeah. It just shows the, the fingerprint of God everywhere. To realize how special the city and the people were to the Lord. It's God's chosen land and Jesus walked on it. I think there's a restoration, as Pastor Miles talked about. How God is really gathering the Jews in. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, we've been grafted in, and, and uh, now this is, this is our city also. We start our day with a visit to Kibbutz Genasar, just north of the Sea of Galilee. It's here that an ancient wooden boat is on display, referred to as the Jesus Boat. It was pulled from the sea in 1986 and has been positively dated to the first century. The boat is the type that Jesus would have used in his ministry while in the Galilee area. A short walk along the shore takes us to another boat. This one is similar in feeling to the Jesus Boat, but much larger and comfortably equipped to accommodate our tour group for praise and worship on the Sea of Galilee. And then if we fast forward to John 21, when Peter's being restored and when that whole passage is coming to pass where, where this wonderful beach walk happens at Taucha and all of the, 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 the wonderful things that Jesus did after resurrection and ascension, there was that moment where he said to them, they, they've been fishing all night long, cast your nets to the other side. And when they did, they brought up 153 fish. Why? Why 153 fish? Because every Hebrew letter has a numerical value, every Hebrew number has a letter value, and 153 says, Ani Elohim, I am God. Israel is definitely a, a contrast, you know, we, we had Tiberias and, and green plush lands and Qumran, it just turns instant desert. Uh, and, and, yet, and yet, right outside of Qumran, they have huge date tree uh, palms that they're growing. And so, you know, it, it speaks of just the, the, the power of God. I'm so blessed every time I visit Israel. After 20 trips, I still manage to find things I've never done before. I'd never ridden a camel before. Can you tell? After the group has some time to behold the magnificent Temple Mount and the City of Gold, we walk down the road which led to the site where, according to tradition, Jesus wept over Jerusalem. So we all went uh, halfway down. So we are still on the mountain. We are still on the Mount of Olives. And uh, soon we'll continue uh, to follow the road all the way down to the valley and to the Garden of Gethsemane. Now the olive tree itself is an incredible story. You know, you saw the ancient ones across the way there. You see that when they grow older, they get kind of hollow on the inside and the shoots come up from below and wrap themselves around and support the tree. The olive tree is a picture of Israel. The shoots, they're called notzrim in the plural. It's where we get the word netzer. It means the shoot, netzer, Nazareth, 
Nazarene. You are the Notrim. Hebrew life speaks of God in a compound unity, Echad, and we know it as three in one. We know that God is three in one. So today, when you go into the water, I want you to hold in your hearts uh, whatever prayer you have before God about where you are in your life, whatever your hopes are for the future, for your family, for your children, grandchildren, for whoever is in your life, for you personally. I believe that when you come out of the water today, in your heart, I want you to be able to hear the Father saying, this is my beloved son, this is my beloved daughter, in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. You know, it's a joy to bring to you the tour that we took called Journey of Restoration. We wanted to bring Israel to you. And not only did our viewers love it, but we, our tour was so full and, they, and people were saying they were gonna come back again next time. Yeah, there's been a great response to the Journey of Restoration. And we understand why, because Israel is a picture of restoration and how God restores a land of people and personally wants to restore each of us. You know, one of the unique features of our program has been biblical reenactments. We make the Bible come alive in Hebrew with English subtitles. We use Israeli actors on location. And we thought we'd like to go back to the beginning of the story yeah, of faith. The beginning of our faith, the call of God from Abraham. Yeah. You know, God called Abraham out of Ur of, of the Chaldean, and he was called the first Hebrew because he crossed yeah, over. That's right. And so we made the story Abraham father of faith. Let's take a look at that. אדוני, הרשה לי לרענן אתכם ולהביא לכם אוכל ומים. שבו בבקשה. איפה שרה אשתך? היא באוהל. בעוד שנה יהיה לכם בן. Well, the role of intercession is very, very powerful. It's very important. It really is for every single believer in the New Testament era. We really need to understand that we can affect the way the world unfolds. We can affect the history and the destiny of people through our prayer. It's God's gift to us, intercession. It's really a power that's given to us by God. It's a, a, a way that He esteems our opinion. He includes us in the process of what He does. And we learn from intercession, from prayer, that He actually hears us. And that's what we see with Abraham. Abraham actually begins to bargain with God about the future of Sodom and Gomorrah. If there are 50 righteous, will you spare them? And he works his way down to 10. If there are 10 righteous, would you spare them? Jesus and Isaac both carried the wood for the sacrifice up Mount Moriah, up Mount Moriah. 
Isaac carried the wood for the sacrifice. You remember when Abraham took him out. And Yeshua, Jesus, carried at least the cross beam, carried the wood for the crucifixion, for the sacrifice, up to the place of sacrifice, both paralleling perfectly in the scripture. Isaac went willingly, and we see that portrayed in scripture, and we know that the Son of Man laid down his life for the sins of the world. Hello, I'm Wayne Fournier, and I've been a supporter of Zona Levitt Ministries for many years. If you see this outreach as worthy of your financial support, please call us at 1-800-WONDERS. Visit us online at levitt.com or write to us at Zola, Box 12, 268, Dallas, Texas, 75225. We depend on your financial sustenance. Thank you. We want to thank you for your gifts of funds. You know, your gifts of funds allow us to come here and bring you these messages. And not only that, but allow us the opportunity to talk to, about with so many people about prophecy. Yeah, it's really true that the scripture tells us you bless Israel, you will be blessed. And we know that these programs are a blessing to Israel. And we, we're so grateful to you for standing with us. Prophecy is so important right now. We're in the time where we're looking at the return of the Lord, it's coming soon. Second Peter 1.19 tells us we have a more sure word of prophecy. So this past year, we heard from some prophetic voices. Let's take a look at that right now. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue in the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Zola Levitt presents with Miles and Catherine Weiss. Uh, the time clock uh, is Jerusalem. That's God's time clock. And uh, the nations of the world are still obsessed with the dividing of the the land of Israel. Uh, let's put it this way, the, the, the nations of the world, uh, the leadership of the world wants to make Judea and Samaria an Arab state. The, the issue is not Israel, and I think Americans should wake up to reality. Reality is that Iran develops capability in order to advance their mega historical goal, domination of the Gulf and the Sunni Muslim world. In order to attain that goal, they have to remove what they perceive to be the mega obstacle, which has nothing to do with Israel. It's the U.S. military power projection. Everybody today is worried about Israel for a lot of reasons, but we don't worry about Israel because that's God's problem. He that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. We pray for Israel because we're instructed to. I tremble for America. The America that we used to stand for freedom and liberty is a thing of the past. I, I might say the myth of the past. Yeah, people will say, you know, America's Babylon the Great, or America's, you know, the unnamed nation in Isaiah 18, or the young lions of Tarshish, or these different places. And I look at all of those, and I find America missing, which some would say, well, America's missing just because a lot of other countries are. But I think us being the greatest power that have existed, has existed on Earth, the fact we're not mentioned is significant. I think it means something has happened to America, and power has shifted uh, to Europe. Uh, to the Far East, to the Middle East, and I look at some of the different scenarios of how that could take place. Uh, in this country, what we see happening, we're trying to divide the land of Israel. We're going against God. God says, I'll cut you into pieces. For you cut Israel up, I'll cut you up. We see our taxes, the amount going in is falling. People are out of work. Unemployment is rising. Our uh, tax collections are going to be down, I think, 18% this year. We see deficits, over a trillion dollars deficits. You can't keep taking in less money and spending more money and survive. The dollar is declining. People see gold going up, silver going up. They're going up because the dollar is, is getting to be worth less. So. All of this impacts us. I think there will be an economic collapse. The scripture teach that in the latter days that uh, Jerusalem will become a cup of trembling. Uh, in other words, uh, it, it would be a burden to the world. Uh, I really believe that some of the, the hatred we see toward Israel, 
uh, some of the, the angst against them is, is really biblical. I mean, uh, we know that they, the, the world wants peace. Uh, they blamed everything on Israel, uh, saying that if uh, we can just only stabilize that region, if we make peace in Israel, the world would be a better world. But they don't understand that the only way Israel experiences a lasting peace is when Messiah sits on that throne. And there's nothing new in the New Testament. The New Testament is praise God for those books who are show, showing us what part of the promises of the covenants were already come to pass. It says, after two days, on the third day, I will establish you back in your country. And sure enough, 48 was the establishment of the state of Israel. So this is the greatest miracle of the 20th century. Today, the persecution is against the nation of Israel itself to, um, after, to kill this child that God has born and to not allow her existence. Now, I don't believe that'll ever happen, but we see it particularly um, manifest present day through Islam. S 70 years ago, it was through Nazism. And before that, it was through Haman and, and through Herod. There's always been persecution to annihilate the Jewish race and to remove them from their land. But praise God, we're at a time of history where God says never again. God is a God of generations. You know, we see God brought Abraham out of the land of Ur. And then we have Isaac and Jacob. And from these amazing people, we have the 12 tribes, which are Israel. Correct. So it was our joy to bring to you the sons of promise. Yeah, you know, the Bible says that it's door by door, generation to generation. And what we wanted to do was bring you not just the story of Isaac and Jacob, but also show modern Israel the blessing that has continued to come through the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob with the modern technology, the medical blessings, and all of the wonderful things that are happening here. So let's take a look now at Sons of Promise. And the Lord appeared unto Isaac and said, Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to your father Abraham. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Sons of Promise Isaac and Jacob. It's just incredible that not far from here, Isaac was increased a hundredfold. And now we see, centuries later, the increase has come through the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to the entire world, as this city, built on a sandbar over 100 years ago, is now this vibrant, thriving city that's exporting blessing all around the world. Yes, yeah, see, in the life of Abraham, Abraham was a man of altars, and Isaac was a man of wells. And we're going to see how Jacob is a man of tents, a peaceful man, that God extends his covenant plan, and the nation of Israel is birthed through the line of Jacob. Yes, and that's important because there's such controversy today in the world about this little country, smaller than New Jersey, and yet a covenant land. So in this series, we're going to look at God's fulfillment of his covenant promises. And that's exactly what happened May 14th, 1948. This nation was born and God intends to keep it here as a witness of who he is until the coming of Messiah. Well, I think that uh, what makes us unique is our vision. And that is we have a vision of changing the attitudes of Christians and Jews toward one another. In fact, the fact that we're based in Jerusalem is also very, very special. You know, a lot of ministries are based in their own country, wherever that might be in the world, and they're telling what, what God believes about Israel and so on. But we're actually here with 70 people on the ground. 
who are showing God's love to the Jewish people. And most Jewish people, most Israelis have a, have a huge memory of the Holocaust and to our great sadness they believe that Christians caused most of their pain throughout the centuries. So we're here as Christians on the ground uh, from all over the world. We have Christians from 15 different countries on our staff. And we're here to show that, that we love them. As Christians, we love the Jewish people, that we believe God has a plan and a purpose for their lives, that we believe God is bringing them back from the nations, and that we will do everything we can to cooperate with God's plans. And Jacob dreamed there was a ladder that reached up into heaven. He saw angels of God ascending and descending. And the Lord said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I will give you the land that you are lying upon. I will give this land to you and to your seed, and your seed will be like the dust of the earth, and you shall expand to the west and east, to the north and to the south. All the families of the earth shall be blessed because of you and your descendants. The Bible tells us that God loves the gates of Zion, so it was our joy to bring you the series Ancient Gates, Future Glory. We have had such great feedback about this series. People are telling, they're calling, letting us know that this has been a very impactful series for them. So we want you to get a look at it as well. So let's go to Jerusalem, Ancient Gates, Future Glory. My heart was glad when they said to me, let us go let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. Our feet will stand in the house of the Lord. Yes, let us go up, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. The gates of Jerusalem. We started with the Dung Gate, which is in the southern end of the old city. We went around to the Zion Gate, to the Jaffa Gate, which is the westernmost gate, and then to the New Gate, to the Damascus Gate, on to Herod's Gate, last week the Lion's Gate, and today we, we finish up with the Golden Gate, also called the Eastern Gate, Messiah's Gate. We're here in Jerusalem. Behind me is the Mount of Olives. To my right, the Zion Gate. You know, Psalm 87, verse 2, tells us, Achev Adonai Sharei Zion. The Lord loves the gates of Zion. How much more so right here at the Zion Gate. And you can see behind me that this gate was won by a hard-fought battle. Absolutely. You know, Jerusalem was known as Zion when David conquered this city and also when the Israelites took back the city. In 1967, the Israelites came and took back the city of our Lord through this gate. And behind me, you can see the literal bullet holes. Tourists love to pass through the gates of this remarkable old city. It's like walking through a time tunnel back to the period of biblical prophets and kings. We started out with 40 countries represented at that first feast. We've continued sponsoring the Feast of Tabernacles celebration for Christians each fall. That quickly grew into Israel's largest tourist event. We've been getting between five and 7,000 Christians uh, for 30 some years now, year in, year out. Even when there's trouble, they still come. Yes. They're very committed. They're not just fair weather friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, our crowds now come from up to 100 countries. And we, we do that, you know, with the Jerusalem March during the feast, and we say, Alone and the Israelis are, uh, uh, they're, they are in tears sometimes to see us. Where do these Christians come from? Because they are taught right. in their schools that Christians have been their enemies, yes. that they have hit them with the crucifix over the head. Right. And, and they had God beat uns, God with us on their belt when they shuffled them into the gas chambers. Mm -hmm. And here are the Christians, 10 out of each nation will take hold of a Jew that uh, uh, the sleeve of a Jew and say, we will go with you. We are here on the eastern side of the Temple Mount, the famous and oldest gate, the Eastern Gate, the Golden Gate, the Mercy Gate. It has many names, and this is 
The eighth gate, isn't the it? The eighth gate, the gate that I was talking about that shut up until the King of Glory comes. He's going to come on the Mount of Olives. He's going to touch down his literal soles of his feet. The earth is going to quake and split open. Water's going to gush out, and the throne is going to appear. Yeah. He's going to set himself here, come through this eastern gate, just as he did the first time. He's going to come through this again. My heart was glad when they said to me, let us go up, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. Our feet will stand in the house of the Lord. So let us go up, let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. And we'll say, peace be within your walls and with all who delight in them. And we'll say, peace be within your gates, the gates of Jerusalem. And we'll say, peace be within your walls and with all who delight in them. For we know that's where his praise awaits. So let us go up. Let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. Let us go up. Let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. Yes, let us go up. Let us go up to the gates of Jerusalem. The gates of Jerusalem. You know, we want to thank Marty Getz for his beautiful music about the gates, and we want to thank you for your support so we can bring you these series. It's such a joy to bring them to you, and we want to really encourage you. If you have ever thought about giving, now is the time that we need it. We're looking forward to our next year. We have so many wonderful things that we're wanting to bring. Yeah, it's pretty exciting, but we can't do it without you. This is really a partnership. It's a community. We really know that the Zola viewers are faithful, we thank you for giving. We encourage you to support us. We understand there are many ministries that are vying for your donations. We get that. We really believe this message is so important, especially as we get closer to the coming of the Lord. Yeah, it's so true that if you stand with the one that God's called us to stand with, he will bless you. We've seen it in our lives and our friends have too. And thank you for being a friend of the Lord and a friend of this ministry. Yeah. And that's why we always end our program by reminding you to pray from Psalm 122, verse 6, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.